So over the past couple of years, in a lot of my videos, I've been complaining about the internet here in Australia. Um, we had a big storm at the start of the year. Um, there's a there's a video on my channel if you want to know more about the storm. But ultimately, what happened was my internet was taken down. Some trees broke some lines. It took a really long time for uh, the company that's called MBN. They are like the infrastructure provider for all of the telcos here in Australia. So MBN owns the infrastructure, and then you pay an ISP and they provide a service over that infrastructure. So we were on fiber to the node connections at the time. So we have fiber that runs up to the general vicinity of where I am. And then the last mile, last couple of kilometers are done by the old uh, copper, copper telecom network, which provided like VDSL type service. Um, so that was terrible. I was getting about 30 megabit per second. It was just a horrible experience. So what I ended up doing after just having a horrendous time getting MBN to fix their, their network at the start of this year, was I ended up going with Starlink. Starlink had like a $1 trial, and I thought, you know, there's not really much to lose if I don't have to pay the $600 for the equipment. And I just pay the $1, chuck it off my roof, see how it goes. And it was fantastic. I was getting, you know, and initially I was getting about 150 megabit per second down, and it just kept getting better and better and better. So I was up to around 280 to, to 300 megabit per second in the end now i do have a lot of trees which i showed in that video there's a lot of trees surrounding the property so it would periodically drop down below the 100 meg per second and that was like the only real pain point with it was that there was no consistency to the speed but in the last couple of weeks um, my property here became eligible for the fiber to the premise upgrade and i initiated that upgrade with a gigabit service and that has now been connected so i thought what i would do is um, take some time to explain my network because uh, I used um, OpenSense to set up a uh, gateway group and I had Starlink and the MBN connection in the gateway group so that when the MBN actually came online, then it could take over the connection and I could remove Starlink from the picture. So I thought I would um, take some time to show that network diagram that we looked at in the Starlink video and what it now looks like and how I set up that gateway group in OpenSense. So let's take a look. So this is the network diagram prior to MBN being connected. So we can see here that I, um, I have Starlink up on the roof and that goes into its own little router, which pipes into VLAN three in an eight port unify switch. Um, that VLAN is trunked through to my 24 port switch and then into my router where I have, so this is, it says PF sense here, but it's now running Open sense because that died at the start of the year in that storm. Um, so yeah, on IGB one, and that has a whole bunch of VLANs. Like it's got the VLAN for uh, the OpenShift cluster, um, IoT devices all run on their own VLAN, a bunch of things. Off the twenty-four port switch, I have the access point that is behind me. Uh, there, <laughs> it's just a UAP uh, Pro, just Wi-Fi five. So. You know, nothing new. It's a pretty old one, but it's, it serves my office. And then I have an in-wall HD that's up in our, our main bedroom upstairs. And that does a bunch of the networking upstairs. So what I did after this diagram is I moved VLAN 3 over to IGB 0. So I just made it a, a native VLAN 3 port on the 24 port switch, plugged it directly into IGB 0, just so I wasn't doing router on a stick for my whole uh, network. I had dedicated IGB0 was for internet, IGB1 was for everything internal. So now with MBN, um, once I knew that was coming, I, I reset it up this way again so that it was router on a stick with VLAN 3 and IGB1. And then I plugged in the uh, IGB0 to the MBN box. So we did have some trouble with NBN, which is to be expected these days. Um, when when they first came out to do the install, there's a pit that they've put um, on my neighbor's property just beside the road, and that's where the fiber runs to. But then from to service the houses, we're in a cul-de-sac, so to service the houses at the end of the street, they needed to run conduit from the pit to a pole and they run the fiber up the pole and then the fiber between the, the power lines to each of my neighbor's houses. Now, luckily for me, it's pit to pole, pole directly to my house because I have the pole right on the corner of my property. And I'll, I'll insert a video here so you see what I mean. 
Um, when the guy got here, he said, hey, there's no conduit between the pit and the pole, so I can't do your install. So I asked him very, very nicely to do my side of the install. So they need to come and they put a little box on the outside of your house and they run fiber from the box to an internal box, which is, you can't quite see in that shot, but it's like on the wall down behind me over there. Um, and then that little box, which is a little NTD, it has the fiber plug into it with an LC connector. And then Cat6 comes out and plugs into your end user device, in, in my case, the OpenSense. So he did that side of the install for me, just no fiber from my house to the pole. So I, I patched that in and I set up a gateway group in OpenSense. So this is the gateway group. So we can see here NVN Starlink. So what I did, I was just testing things before. What I did was I set it up like this so that the Starlink would be my tier two gateway. So it would prioritize NVN if it was available, but if it's not available, it will fall back to Starlink. So that's how I set it up. Um, just for the purposes of this video, we'll just leave it the other way around so I can demo it. And then in the firewall settings, we go to rules and my LAN network. So you can see I've set the gateway for this rule to MBN Starlink. So that uses that gateway group. So you go down here um, and you just choose your gateway. So in my case, MBN Starlink. And then we can see, I can I can reach the internet from here and around 20 to 30 milliseconds latency. And so if we go and have a look at what that traffic's actually doing, we we'll just give it a second to load. Might remove LAN from this for a second. So you can see all of my traffic at the moment is going via Starlink, right? And that's because at the moment, the, the tier one gateway in my gateway group is Starlink. Now, if I were to take that interface down, and we'll go back to traffic. Now we can see that ping is working again and now it's going via the MBN link. So that for me was really, I mainly did it for as a refresher so that I, and so that I wasn't inconvenienced on the day when MBN was activated. All I needed to do was take down the Starlink interface, bring up the um, MBN interface and it would work or it was already up. So all I needed to do was take down the Starlink interface and it would start working. So that's, I think that's a really cool feature of OpenSense. I think you can do it with Unify now as well. So my speed tests from this device, from my laptop, aren't too great because I'm connected over the Wi-Fi 5, so I'm limited by Wi-Fi 5 anyway, but I'm getting around 890 megabits per second from my gigabit connection, which is pretty good. And I think I'm actually being CPU bottlenecked on the on the router now, the OpenSense router. So that's about the best you can expect from from Wi-Fi 5 around that 300 megabit per second. So if I log into some device that is physically cabled into the network, so we remove that Wi-Fi 5 limitation and we just do a speed test from here. So you can see my speed test there, not the best it can be, 734 megabits per second. I've, I've been seeing closer to the 900, so you know, maybe a bit busy today. I know they're connecting some of the neighbors as well. Um, but yeah, I think, I think overall it has, it's good. It's cheaper than Starlink to have the gigabit service here in Australia with uh, Aussie Broadband is the, tele is the telecommunications company I'm with. So back to my network diagram, um, what they did for me was they have a pole that's at the corner of my property. I have some conduit that runs down that pole, goes under my driveway and it comes up in this corner of my house. They didn't want to use that for dollars reasons. Um, so what they ended up doing was an aerial connection from that pole across, like over my driveway and connecting to the house. And that comes down the side of my office and connects just outside the door there. That runs through into the office. So yeah, I have that connected here. And then I have Starlink as a backup, which I've, I've actually canceled my, my Starlink service. Now it'll be finishing in a few days. 
So I thought I'd take this opportunity to quickly make a video about using multiple WANs and setting up those gateway groups because it's a pretty cool feature and it works like really well, really flawlessly. It was, you know, it was good for me to be able to set that up prior to the connection being established so that when the day came, I could really quickly just change over to the, the new um, connection and start using that. I didn't need to worry about, you know, configuring things and, and having the stress of networks going down, whatever else. It was really quick, really easy. I really like that feature of, of OpenSense and, and PFSense as well. I think I initially spoke about when I first moved here, I knew that the fiber, fiber to the node connection would be fairly unreliable. So I had a 4G backup as well. And I just paid for those two internet services for the first few months of living here so that I um, you know, could build that confidence in the MBN connection to know that I could actually do my job effectively and not, not worry about things dropping out. That's all I got today. Really, really quick video on, on using OpenSense to uh, configure those multi multiple WANs and gateway groups and use that for, for routing. Really happy with the MBN service. It's It's been fairly consistent. As you saw on that speed test, 734 megabit per second. Download 42 up. That's It's more consistent between that 700 and 900 than, for example, Starlink, which if it was really raining, I could be down in the 30s again, which is where I was with fiber to the, fiber to the node. But it was really good on the top end where it would get to like 300 and then, you know, it, it's good to have the the bottleneck be my own infrastructure, my Wi-Fi five access points or my my cheap white box router, for example. Uh, that's a much better problem for me to have than a problem that I can't do anything about on the infrastructure provider side. So I'm really happy to finally have fiber to the premise, and I'm a little bit sad to be saying goodbye to Starlink because you know just everything it stands for is like that disconnected um, feeling, the independence that you get, not worrying about infrastructure providers and any issues they might have on their side, you just need a dish on your roof and a good solid source of power and you're connected to the internet. So I'll definitely be keeping the dish and I will be reactivating that service whenever I need it, if I ever need it. And who knows, maybe if NBN pisses me off, I will just reactivate it and, and cancel the fiber to the premise connection. But yeah, hope, hopefully that's interesting. Hopefully you enjoy learning about multiple gateways, multiple WANs with OpenSense. If you have any questions, let me know below.